Will all this voter suppression end up uh, ruining Lula's chances? I don't think so, Brazilians but we'll see. Brazilians voted for their next presidents. Here. And most of the votes went to two frontrunners. One was current president and far-right leader Jair Bolsonaro. Nós defendemos cada vez mais a família tradicional. And the other was Brazil's former president, the left-wing politician Traditional Luiz family. Inácio da Silva, also known as Lula. Portanto, o país que eu deixei, I gotta pee, I'll be back. O povo tem saudade. For months leading up to the election, Lula pulled very well against Bolsonaro and was expected to win comfortably in the first round. But when the results came in, Lula's lead was small. As of this video, he and Bolsonaro are set to face each other in a runoff. Lula is Brazil's most famous and popular politician. At one point during his presidency, his approval rating was nearly 90%. But Brazilian politics has changed, and the story of Lula's career is a good way to see exactly how. Lula's left-wing politics are rooted in his days as a factory worker and a union leader. That's where he began his career as a politician. During Brazil's military dictatorship, Lula led massive strikes and protests. By the 1980s, he had helped organize thousands of trade union supporters into a political party, the Workers' Party, or the PT. Lula's coalition drew mainly from Brazil's political left. It included the working class, low-income people, left-leaning Catholic voters, Afro-Brazilians, and indigenous people. Uh, this is a pretty unique arrangement of forces. In my opinion, it's one of the things that allowed the Workers' Party to grow and become so strong. In 1989, Lula ran as his party's candidate for president. He made it to the second round and lost by only 4 million votes. Then he lost again in 1994 and again in 1998. His base was growing, but not yet enough for him to win a presidential election. During much of this time, Brazil was experiencing an economic crisis. At one point, inflation was so out of control that the country switched its new currency five separate times in seven years. And about a fifth of the country was in poverty. In the late 1990s, Brazil's center-right-led government passed a series of dramatic economic reforms. They brought inflation down by establishing a stable currency, and they brought down poverty. But their recovery also left much of the country behind, including many in Lula's coalition. O presidente da república está mentindo para a sociedade brasileira, vai enriquecer os ricos e empobrecer os pobres ainda mais. But in 2002, when Lula ran for president a fourth time, he tried something a little bit different. In the 2002 race, Lula brought several members of Brazil's conservative and center-right parties into his campaign, including prominent businessman José Alencar as his running mate. By including them, Lula expanded his coalition, attracting the support of center-right voters, like business owners and bankers. Lula is this guy that he can go to a board meeting at a major bank or to a poor favela and speak in a way that people will relate to him. This new kind of coalition led to Lula winning his first presidential election. Prometo manter, defender e cumprir a Constituição. In Lula's first term, Brazil's economy grew rapidly, mostly because of a booming trade partnership with China. He benefited from a magical economical moment. He used this cash flow to finance a new social welfare and cash transfer program, Bolsa Familia, which gave this, Brazilians a stipend for insurance. This is what blew his shit up. During their children were attending school and up to date on their vaccines. It was a way to give people money for their immediate needs while getting them to, to put their kids on the path that would eventually help them escape that cycle of poverty. This program, along with other reforms like increasing the minimum wage, also grew his coalition even further. And more Brazilians voted for left and center-left politicians across the country. The economy picked up and then, like, we had this massive period of growth. Lula became an unstoppable force. By the end of his first term in office, Lula's approval rating reached over 60%. And even though his administration began to attract accusations of bribery and corruption, Lula's unprecedented popularity and coalition building led to a re-election victory in 2006. By the end of Lula's second term in office, GDP was the highest in Brazil's history. And so was the president's approval rating. The most popular politician on earth. <laughs> 
In 2009, Lula picked a fellow Workers' Party member, Dilma Rousseff, as his successor. She inherited his coalition and easily won the presidency in 2010. Early in her administration, global demand for commodities fell, which led to a recession in Brazil. And her approach to managing the economy cost her some support from the center-right business community. Her administration also faced accusations of corruption, which cost her even more support. It doesn't help that she was not. By the way, it's Brazilian politics. So there is no, there's no aspect of Brazilian politics that is devoid of corruption, for the record. Just so you understand. Like, when people say, like, oh, dude, what the fuck? Like, Lula's corrupt or whatever. It's like, dude, what are you talking about? First of all, his level of corruption did not meet the actual fucking standard. It was, was significantly less. And not only that, but the main person who prosecuted him was, again, a Bolsonarista who, who uh, ended up getting elevated to the fucking highest uh, judicial position in the country and is no longer in that position because it came out due to, I can't believe I'm saying this, Glenn Greenwald's and his team's investigative reporting that was largely falsified, the car wash operation, was largely uh, just made up bullshit so that they could throw this motherfucker in jail. Not a good politician. She did not negotiate with Congress in a very skillful way. And the economic guidance of her administration was very flawed. And then in 2014, something happened that would lead to the entire coalition's collapse. A government investigation found that many Workers' Party officials were involved in a corrupt scheme with Brazil's state-owned oil company, including Rousseff, whose approval rating tanked and in 2016 she was removed from office. Lula was also implicated for allegedly taking bribes. He was convicted in 2017 and sent to prison. But unlike Rousseff, he remained popular. For a lot of people, despite Lula going to jail, they still love him. For one, a lot of people say, well, they all rob us. At least he's, this guy was giving us back something. But with no one there to hold the left coalition together, the opportunity... Okay, bro, you have to fucking... What? Bro, this is like... Is this like obtuse or intentionally right-wing framing? That's insane. Like they, dog, this video was written and, and published five days ago, not in like 2018 or 2017, okay? Like there is additional information that they're, they're, that they're not mentioning. This expert said Lula was successful because of magic. Yeah, not socialism, magic. It's Vox Lamount, but it doesn't make sense because as the fucking video itself showed, it's not like Lula was, and I hate to admit this, but it's not like he was a fucking genuine threat to like American hegemonic power, okay? Lula is not fucking Che Guevara. He's not, he's not Fidel Castro. He is, part of his appeal is literally that he is, uh, much more middle of the ground. He's a social democrat. He was never a threat to like American institutions in any meaningful capacity. I mean, he's probably like a little bit more than than AMLO, but still. So there's no reason to like make this seem like the uh you know, Lula was um Lula wasn't unjustifiably jailed emerged for an unusual politician to start building his own from the right. Throughout Rousseff's impeachment, retired military officer Jair Bolsonaro was laying the groundwork for his chance at the presidency in the 2018 election. Bolsonaro's core supporters were evangelicals, farmers, businessmen, and anti-abortion voters. He was the candidate of the far right, but he also gained the support of the center-right 
and even some leftist voters who are disillusioned with the Workers' Party, creating a unique coalition. What? Meanwhile, Lula's former coalition was split between several candidates helping propel Bolsonaro to an easy victory and signaling a new political moment in the country. What Bolsonaro did in 2018 was unlike... You know what's funny? I mean, I want to say they're like just speak talking shit because it's Brazil and no one knows any better. But this coverage is identical to how they talk about Donald Trump. Donald Trump created a unique cons Donald Trump created a unique coalition of like white working class people who were disillusioned. It's like, bro, their disillusionment came from racism, okay? That's number 1. And two, why do we maintain this lie that like poor voters overwhelmingly or poor voters are like turning and, and voting for the Republican Party? It's like, that's never a real thing, okay? We do this in America too. That's not real, okay? That's not. When you look at the stats, it is so consistent. Poor voters are voting Democrat, Okay. And everybody knows it, too. No, don't say yes, it is. There are poor voters that, of course, vote for the Republicans. There are poor voters that, of course, vote for fucking Bolsonaro. Shut the fuck up. But you have to still look at the broader picture. You can't be like, oh, well, I have a poor uncle who voted for fucking Donald Trump and make an assessment off of that. You gotta look at the uh, percentages. You have to look at the fucking percentages. And when you look at the percentages in America, poor people are still, when they can vote, okay, voting for Democrat. Like we had ever seen, it was a real shift. The hard right was replacing the moderate right at the center of the political arena. In office, Bolsonaro oversaw further destruction of the Amazon, extreme hunger, and Brazil being one of the worst impacted by COVID with over 680,000 deaths. Brazil's GDP dipped back down, and he also took a confrontational stance with Brazilian democracy, trying to control the media and undermining the Supreme Court. Due to these factors, his popularity never exceeded 40%. Trump. In 2019, Brazil's Supreme Court released Lula from prison, and later annulled his convictions, yeah, why? enabling him to run again in 2022. Wait, why did they do that? I wonder. I wonder how that happened. Essa nossa candidatura é uma candidatura que tem como objetivo fundamental, sabe, re Lula also positioned himself as a pro-democracy candidate in the race. He worked to assemble another strong and diverse coalition from across the political spectrum. Lula has made a front that maybe cannot get broader. Eight former presidential candidates from left and right, a big part of the business community. Lula even courted evangelicals by campaigning at churches. At the same time, Bolsonaro enacted social reform programs to court low-income and working-class Brazilians, who were usually aligned with Lula. But as the 2022 election approached, Lula's strategy seemed to be working more than Bolsonaro's. The polls are spot on in regards to Lula. Lula finished the first round with around 48% of the vote, but they were dead wrong about Bolsonaro. Lula still won the That's first round. That's a consistent round, issue. It's still an issue. performed every poll leading up to the election. And the bigger surprise was in Brazil's Congress, where the right-wing candidates aligned with Bolsonaro won the majority. So even if Lula goes on to win the presidency, he'll face a stronger opposition than he ever has before. Lula has made a lot of commitments. It remains to be seen how he will be able to implement that. This is a force that has to be reckoned with. It is part of the Brazilian mainstream politics and will continue like that for years to come.